What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Juma's World Podcast. Today, we're going to be going over the Sunday games for week four in the NFL 2020 season. We're going to start off with a shocker. Now, the Cardinals at the Panthers, I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't know exactly what's going on in the NFL. It's similar to like the bubble with the NBA. Everybody just does whatever they want to, you know, just whatever they want to do because I did not foresee this coming. I, me personally, Teddy Bridgewater, I don't consider him like a guy that's going to take the Panthers to the promised land. Even with this win, like it's not like they're going to really do anything. Like they beat a team that they weren't supposed to, but it's the NFL any given Sunday. It was one interesting stat though. Carolina is 2-0 in games without uh, Christian McCaffrey this season. And people think that it's too much attention being paid to him, which is why the offense can't evolve. I don't agree with that, but that was just one of the things that I, you know, pretty much, you know, picked up on with it because people wait for you to get hurt or not play to kind of be able to say, look, you see, they don't really need him or whatever. Trust me, Christian McCaffrey is a really, really good back in this league. And when he comes back, they're going to be better. The problem is the coaching staff, they have to figure out ways to implement what's going on. The Cardinals, I have no idea what Kyler Murray is doing. Uh, for the first time, I was very, very critical of a lot of the things that he did in the game. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's still early. You know what I'm saying? Sophomore season. We got to see how that works out. But I was very, very disappointed in the Cardinals losing this game. The Colts and the Bears. This is why I don't know how to gauge the Colts. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Like, Phillip Rivers. It, it, it's weird. Like, just the feel of it. But they're winning. Three and one. I didn't expect them. Like, I don't know what's going on, bro. Like... <laughs> It's very, the NFL is just so crazy, and it doesn't even matter that there's no fans in a lot of these stands. It would still be this crazy. That's why we watch. That's why we enjoy the NFL, because you just never know what's going to happen, bro. And if you if you watch this game, it was very, very like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing exciting happening. Like, I'm flipping through the channels, and I'm like, this team sucks, and I come back, and they still suck. But the Bears, like I said, you never know what's going to happen. Everybody thought that, you know, Mitchell Trubisky was the problem. I try to tell everybody, sometimes it's the overall team and the coaching staff that doesn't give everybody that that opening that they want to be successful. And, and this is one of those teams. The Bears just seem like a dull version of themselves. Like they're not really exciting and they're not really going to do anything, but we watch them because they're the Bears. But this was just a really, it, it wasn't a real exciting game. If you checked it out, like I said, it wasn't one of the games that I continuously stayed on because it's like, bro, I, I am ready for all that. Jaguars and the Bengals. Dude, this is outrageous, dude. This is outrageous, man. Joe Burrow's first career win. Um, he's out there balling, dude, coming into the league number one pick. I told you, I see really, really good stuff with him. If they're able to build around him or somehow get another pick that's high and they can bring him in, Joe Burrow is going to be, he's, he's going to be around for a while. Barring injury, he's going to be a really, really good, uh, formidable player in this league, man. I love what he does. I I don't know. I, just, I enjoy watching him play. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, like as much as I don't really care for the Bengals, I'm enjoying watching Joe Burrow. So the Jags losing this game is not really something to write home about. The Jags is not really a good football team right now. So this was like a toss up for me, but this was a lot more exciting than the Colts Bears. Browns and the Cowboys. OBJ just had his way with the Cowboys, dude. I, look, I don't care about Dak Prescott having 450 passing yards when they're getting blown out and then it's always a comeback. I tell all, about, all my friends that are Cowboy fans, I'm like, listen, when he can get a lead and have those numbers, I will respect him as a quarterback. I do, listen, if you've played any level of football, you know that once you get out to a big league, you, you play lax. Your defense is just not trying to give up anything big over the top, so there's a lot of yards to gain. Dak Prescott, that dude right there, he loves to lose games, dude. That dude loves to be losing and then start throwing for a thousand yards. Like, bro, you're throwing the ball in a losing effort. It's the same thing. I've been saying this forever. They have never been up where he had a really good game. Like, he just, like, I, I don't know, dude. If, if I'm Jerry Jones, I wouldn't pay him either, dude. Like, he, I don't really care, dog. Like, you could throw for as much as you want in garbage time. I need you to be winning the game. Or even if you're going to do it like Tim Tebow did it, win the game. You know, okay, you got lucky against Atlanta, but Atlanta gave up a 23, you know, 28 to 3 lead in the Super Bowl. Like, they all, they, they suck. I'm not worried about that, dude. But he's always just continuously doing that. And it's disgusting to me that my Cowboy friend, you know, my Cowboy fan friends, they're like, yo, bro, he's throwing for almost 500 yards. No, he's not Patrick Mahomes. The dude's a loser, bro. Saints and the Lions. All right, Saints. Yo, bro, low key, they had to fight for this one. Because I'm telling you right now, them Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, we're going to get to Tom Brady in a second, but th that boy out there throwing five TDs, and they over there being three and one. The Saints got to fight for that division, so we're going to see how that's going to work out. But that was a hard-fought game, and they had to put a lot into it, man. The Lions played very, very hard, and it could have easily won this game. Um, very, very exciting game, by the way, to watch, because like when a team is playing good defense, 
you, you, you get kind of excited watching it. And the Lions, for the most part, were able to control the game, but then, you know, they just went Drew Brees, went Drew Brees on them. Vikings and the Texans, uh, Vikings and the Texans, right? When I told you guys the Texans were gonna have a very, very dis like crazy season, a lot of you guys laughed at me because you thought that Deshaun Watson could do it by himself. Let me explain something to you, all right? There are 11 men on one side of the football. One guy is not going to change life by himself. Okay, which means the quarterback position, as good as Deshaun is, he can't do it by himself. The Vikings are not a good football team. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to say it so that everybody understands. They are not a good football team right now. Will they get better? Probably. But right now, they're not a good football team. So when you go out there and look, like I said, they're one and three, right? So this is their first win. People have been dominating them because Kirk Cousins is Kirk Cousins and that's it. So... When you start to evaluate everything going into the Texans, it's very, very bad, the situation that he's in right now, because the overall team sucks uh, when you look at the Texans. But, you know, Deshaun, Deshaun's going to be Deshaun. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, people have to understand that you can't take away something that somebody primarily relies on and expect the same outcome. And that's pretty much what happened in this game. Seahawks and the Dolphins. This dude, yo, look, bro. Russell Wilson just threw another two touchdowns. I, look, guys. Let me just go ahead and point a couple things out. I'm not saying that Russell Wilson shouldn't be like a top MVP candidate. I'm just saying that Patrick Mahomes got it wrapped up. Like that's all. Right now, I'm going Patrick Mahomes. Let me know who you're going for. That dude is playing out of his mind. But again, the Seahawks are supposed to win this game. Even though it was like a hard fought, you know, whatever, back and forth game. We all expected the Seahawks to win the game. The Dolphins are not ready yet. They're about a year or two away uh, to actually competing, in my opinion. Uh, to like start making some noise so i expected the seahawks to win this game was not surprised of the way that it, it, it went down uh surprised that they got 23 points though on that defense thought they would play them better defensively but the seahawks ultimately uh was able to you know bring that one home charges in the buccaneers now remember he threw five touchdowns against a rookie quarterback like he's battling a rookie quarterback back and forth and justin herbert is battling and battling and battling I i'm starting to like him in the draft i didn't like him coming out I liked what I saw yesterday, going up against the GOAT and, you know, showing like, yo, look, bro, I could throw the football too. Very, very exciting game. A lot of people that was frustrated with Tom Brady that benched him in fantasy were ripping their hair out. I know a lot of people that are listening to this podcast right now ultimately had him in their lineup and is raging uncontrollably that they benched him and he went off and did this because nobody expected this. You know, Tom Brady, listen, at the end of the day, I don't know what he's going to be for the rest of the season. I can tell you that for me, just my eye test, looking at the way that he's been playing, he's not the same Tom Brady. All right, whatever that means, it is what it is. But I'm just saying, he's not the same Tom Brady. So we're gonna have to wait. Maybe it's just, you know, no preseason. Maybe it's a relationship with his receivers. Let's see what happens. But I'm just saying, for now, he's not the same Tom Brady. To me, to my eyes. All right, the Ravens get back on track um, after a debacle against the Chiefs. Um, you know, pretty exciting, man, to kind of, you know, see uh, Lamar take it for six on a read option. It kind of turned me on excessively to see it happen, bro. Like, the dude just be gone, bro. Like, bro, hype. Oh, all right, I'm out of here. That, that, Listen, this is what I'm saying. If you, if Lamar Jackson just focuses on lofting that football when dudes are wide open, because he has some really fast receivers, and then he has those legs at the same time, you can't do nothing with him. You ain't going to be able to do nothing with him. It's going to be a dangerous situation to watch. You, you can't. He's so much faster than everybody on the field, including cornerbacks. So you can't really do much to him if you don't play the right defense. Dangerous, dangerous player. Once he figures it all out, GG's in the chat. Rams and the Giants. The most exciting thing about this was Tate and Ramsey. Now, if you guys don't know, it was all over social media. You know, Ramsey has daughters with Tate, uh, you know, with Tate's sister, and it was personal, and they fight and stuff like that. Let me just say this, right? If you guys are going to go on to be anybody watching this, young, old, whatever, if you're involved in the NFL, you're involved in any kind of, you know, professional sports, you can't let that affect your check, all right? This is two grown men out there acting like idiots where th that gets dealt with off the field. You know what I'm saying? You guys figure it out together. You know, the family, however it works. Um, I don't know what that is. It's not exciting to me because I go, I, I want to watch football. Like if I wanted to watch fighting in a brawl, I'll go watch UFC. Those two guys are the biggest idiots I've seen in a very long time. And it's not like, oh my God, these guys are, you know, gangsters. They are idiots. That's what they are. If I'm turning on my TV to watch a football game, I don't care about the brawl. I like it in hockey though when the fights break out, but that's part of hockey. This is not part of football. You see, like this is just two idiots going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that was the most exciting part about the game, but both of those guys need to grow up and let those two adults handle that. Cause that has nothing to do with Tate 
and more to do with Ramsey and the sister. I understand that you're the brother, but whatever, dude, you're just a brother. Like, yo, you know, Ramsey out there take, you're taking it down right quick. You know what I'm saying? Like dropping a rough up the block, no Uber though. That's what your sister chose. That has nothing to do with you. But Golden Tate, don't worry about it. You still suck at football. Bills and the Raiders. Yo, dude, the Bills, the Bills, they, they, they look like they for real, bro. The Bills look like they for real. And the Raiders, I thought they were for real too. Now I'm starting to look at them like, yo, you guys suck. Carr was very, very disappointed. If you watch the um, the post-game interview, he was very, very disappointed. And I like that because I don't think I've seen him that upset in a, it, forever, as a matter of fact. It looks like emotionally they they are feeling like they're good enough to compete, but it it's just not there yet. And Josh Allen is just balling. Jo I told, hey, Josh Allen though? Listen, just be careful. I'm just letting you guys know, just be careful. Obviously they may take, I told you guys that they were gonna probably win the AFC East, but I'm liking what I'm seeing from Josh Allen. I, I really am. Don't be surprised if the Bills just start shocking the world just start beating on dudes, because their defense is good enough to compete with anybody. The Eagles and the 49ers. The NFC sucks, bro. NFC East sucks. Like these dudes are at the top of the NFC and they suck. They're a terrible football team. Like I don't even know, bro, what is this dude? Like how are you one, two, and one and you're number one? Like this is like, you know like how everybody gets a trophy in certain sports, like when, when the kids are young? It's like that, like, you guys are terrible. Carson Wentz sucks. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Watching this game, I, I yo, dog, I just like, you know what? I gotta watch it, cause they're gonna wanna hear me talk about it. But I was disgusted the entire game. It was like, what, like nine, eight, stupidness going into the half? Let me tell you something about this game, dude. Carson Wentz sucks at football. The 49ers, I told you guys already, the Super Bowl loser usually never makes the playoffs the next year. I told you guys that after the Super Bowl, and you guys didn't want to listen. Oh, 49 is this, whatever. No, it's pretty much a wrap. I want to thank you guys for joining me for week four, NFL 2020. Be back soon. Until next time, one love, y'all.